Well, coming up on today's show, Tesla says its new self-driving chip is finally baked. Uh, they hit the streets of California with a new pop-up Tesla event, why Second Life EV batteries looks like a growing market, and Volkswagen's R division could be taking over EVs. But first of all, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. Hello and welcome to the Sunday, the 5th of August edition of EV News Daily. It's Martin Lee here with the news you need to know about electric cars and the move towards sustainable transport. We'll start with a story that sums up really why I've made 202 of these shows without missing a single day. So people have been occasionally emailing, twittering, getting in touch, saying, you know, enjoy the show, whatever. Normally they kind of say, hey, found the show, kind of like, you know, listening every day. Thanks for doing it, but why do you do it? And this story will sum up in in like two minutes flat why the kind of the motivation of doing this and it was a story that broke yesterday here in the uk even low levels of air pollution may cause heart abnormalities similar to those seen during the early stages of heart failure a study has warned writes alex matthews king in the independent newspaper here in the uk when i first saw it uk research published just as the government is consulting on proposals for its clean air strategy tested 4,000 people and found that those who lived near a busy road had larger hearts on average than those living in less polluted areas. This comes despite the fact that the participants came from areas where pollution levels were even below UK guidelines. Blood tests showed a clear association between people living on busier roads and increased levels of nitrogen dioxide, NO2, in their system, in their heart, in their bloodstream, and particulates, small air particle pollution, PM2.5, in their bodies. And I'll put a link to the independent article in the show notes if you want to have a look. That in in a in a 90 second story sums up why we need to move as quickly as we can to EVs. It's not political. It's not economic. It's not because I favour Tesla over another car maker that only makes diesel cars. It's simply because we have to do this for our health and our children's health. And if we want to hand anything on for future generations, we need to accelerate the move towards sustainable transport and driving EVs. And that's why I hope if you can do one thing for me, it is share this podcast as we celebrate and look forward to a really bright future of everybody driving on electric power, sustainable power, power that's come from your own rooftop, maybe renewables, and still maintaining all of that mobility that the personal car has given us over the last 100 years, but doing it in a way that doesn't harm the health of fellow human beings that we live next door to. That's the reason. Anyway, moving on. Let me tell you about Tesla's biggest claim that they made, I think, on the earnings call a couple of days ago earlier this week. Was it about the Model 3 production numbers? Well, that certainly got some fizzy. Was it about building the China Gigafactory 3 without raising more money from the capital markets? Certainly got a few people talking. Some people say that merely the apology of Elon Musk to those analysts because their poor ickle-wickle egos got a little bit hurt three months ago when he said they asked boneheaded questions. Well, apparently, a couple of analysts being upset drove hundreds of millions off the share price three months ago. I don't understand the stock market. If that's true, holy moly, we're all screwed because... <laughs> if that can affect the share price of a company. Well, some say that the apology he gave to those offended analysts put the share price up by huge amounts. Maybe, though, it's this, because people who were really listening to that earnings call heard another story. The biggest claim, according to some, on that earnings call is to do with their own silicon, their own chips that will define the future of Tesla and self-driving cars. All the cars it's currently building... As you may or may not know, all of the cars currently being built are capable of full self-driving. So when Elon Musk announced after the company's second quarter earnings report that Tesla is developing its very own computer chips, it was a momentous claim by the car company, according to a story on wired.co.uk. And you may remember when Apple started doing this rather than just buying in uh, the technology, but designing their own chips. And even earlier this year, or was it this year? Maybe it was last year. They decided not to use a British company that made their graphics chips, by the way, but do their own thing. It just wiped 
so much value off that British company. And people thought, well, they're always going to be supplying Apple. And then Apple said, we're going to do our own thing. We think we can do it better. We're doing our own thing. It, it just goes to show that so many massive tech companies want that total control inside their walled garden rather than buying things in. And Tesla are no different. Elon Musk's grand reveal led him to boast that the company has the world's most advanced computer designed specifically for autonomous operation and for nothing else as well, purely for that one thing. Elon says the uh, new silicon is an order of magnitude faster than the chips currently in the cars uh, that Tesla are making, a product developed by NVIDIA, by the way, uh, an industry leader and supplier to 20 other robocar companies. Uh, well, the NVIDIA chips, Musk says, can deal with 200 frames of video per second from all the cameras around the car. Tesla's new chip can handle 2,000 frames per second and have spare capacity. Uh, redundancy, if you like, for safety. I'll put a link to that Wired article in the show notes if you want to have a read of it. Well, Simon Alvarez at Teslarati has been keeping an eye on those YouTube videos of Tesla Model 3 performance runs, and this is a goodie. Tesla enthusiast Eli of My Tesla Adventure was able to get behind the wheel of a fully stock Model 3 performance earlier this week. Eli noted that he was able to use his V-Box. The V-Box is a device that measures a vehicle's acceleration, speed, and overall stats during a specific run when he took the Model 3 performance for a spin. While a video is unavailable, the YouTube host was able to share the data from his V-Box on his social media. Uh, following on the article are some screenshots. If you have a look at them, you can see that his stock Model 3 performance did 0 to 60 in 3.32 seconds. So that is no mucking about with any of the software, as we've talked about recently with companies hacking into the Model 3 uh, to do things with track mode, and also on the stock wheels and stock rubber as well, which even Elon tweeted is indeed a compromise between grip and performance and range. So there's room, there's definitely time to be had in that 3.32 seconds. Just incredible. Well, staying with Tesla for one second, they recently came out to the collection in Oxnard in California for a very quick, kind of a, um, a bit of a quick and dirty pop-up, uh, according to Clean Technica. Uh, the event involved a handful of Tesla employees, the two larger Tesla vehicles, and some basic flags is all they had rolling into town, uh, writes Kyle Fields, Clean Technica. Uh, Tesla chose not to bring the Model 3 to the two-day event, even though the company had uh, blocked out room uh, to host one, uh, the representatives at the event shared that they had enough orders for the Model 3 and were simply exploring the concept of a pop-up event in Oxnard to gauge interest. A link to the Clean Technica article in the show notes. My most recent uh, experience of a Tesla event was the Goodwood Festival of Speed a couple of weeks back now, when all of the Tesla representatives I spoke to because I didn't introduce myself at the time I was just kind of milling around the stand and it was a big stand by the way if you look back at what Tesla were doing at Goodwood a couple of years ago it was in a tent shock horror Tesla using a tent eh? but it was in a tent and it was packed by the way but the stand they had this year was huge. I reckon it dominated just about every other car maker there. It was just on a whole new scale than I've seen before. And I was just chatting. I was walking around the stand. And I was just, I mean, before I said, oh, I'd kind of do a silly little podcast about electric cars. They were just talking to me, all of them enormously well briefed by the way as soon as they worked out i was a bit geeky a bit nerdy and talking about things like the design studio and you know oh you've made the white interior available they were like okay so this dude kind of you know we can go to a next level with this guy they were all perfectly briefed and only one of them said as a by the way look i can tell you're a huge fan would you be interested in putting your deposit down for your model 3 i'm paraphrasing that might not have been the phrase you know the sales phrase but are you a reservation holder? Would you do that? If you wanted to, we could do it today, but no worries. I mean, there was no hard sell. Only one of them actually said, do you want a Model 3? Uh, you know, the answer is yes, um, uh, of course. Followed quickly, quickly followed by, but my wife isn't here, and therefore, no. But, you know, it was a nice thing to be asked, and there was no pressure. Uh, so that was my, my most recent experience of uh, Tesla. Uh, right, moving on to Second Life Batteries then. According to a recent report by the research group Circular Energy Storage, the global market for end-of-life lithium-ion batteries is expected to be worth $1.3 billion this year alone, according to Marion Willen, who writes for pvmagazine.com. Uh, whilst recycling batteries is common for portable devices, it can be postponed through Second 
Second Life applications in the case of EV batteries, with applications such as um, the use in energy storage systems, you'll see it called ESS sometimes. Uh, the report states that EV batteries have the optimal properties for energy storage with regards to capacity, in other words, they huge compared to most batteries you can get for your house at the moment. And uh, they've got loads of life cycles left. Maybe not the life cycles and the power you need for EV, but for running your house, fine. Another five or ten years out of them. For that type of end-of-life use, EVs are placed in static energy storage systems, particularly residential and, more recently, utility scale as well. It's fascinating to see that by 2025... That market could be worth 4.2 billion US dollars. Ah, it's a good time to have some skin in the game if you're investing in anything to do with EV batteries. Well, way back in the day, many people thought that electrifying cars would be the death knell for performance cars. Oh, but Tesla changed our tunes, and many other cars have since then, says Andrew Crock for Roadshow at CNET.com. Volkswagen's first foray into performance electric vehicles came by the way of the IDR Pikes Peak car, the all-electric race car that was built and designed in mega quick time, solely for the purpose of smashing the Pikes Peak hill climb record. A feat it accomplished a couple of months ago in June, 671 horsepower from its electric motors at the IDR Pikes Peak didn't just get the record, it smashed the overall record. It thought, you know, everyone knew that it was going to get the record in its class for EVs. Now, overall record, boom, done. Then, Goodwood Festival of Speed. Same again. And Volkswagen's R performance division is now off the back of that success, investigating the idea of performance orientated, or oriented really, uh, electric vehicles, according to Autocar, citing a conversation with Jost Capito. He is the head of Volkswagen R. He said, if we do an R electric car, it's got to be a proper R, or else it wouldn't make sense, Capito told Autocar. Well, the division head claims it had the idea of when such a car could arrive, uh, but with the rapid pace of development, that figure could change. There's going to be no official announcement just yet, but the first two EV Volkswagens on their new platform, um, if you're interested, it's the MEB platform they're building all of their new cars on. It's the ID, the ID Hatchback and the ID Cross, with all the Zs. It's a crossover. The latter of which is going to be the first one that arrives in the USA. A link to that CNET article in the show notes. And finally, British Touring Car Championship organiser Toka has announced that the series is going to be moving to hybrid EV engines from 2022, confirming a move mooted by PMW in the March 2018 issue of PMW. Says Andrew Charman, who's writing for PMW magazine. It was confirmed at the working group, uh, the working group event for the race series, said that from 2022, a EV hybrid unit is going to be fitted to all the touring cars as an addition to the drivetrain. It's going to allow each car to have a supplementary power a reserve of hybrid power during the race. It can then be used by drivers as part of their race strategy. Now, the working group who put the rules together for touring cars is going to work with specialists to finalise the engineering aspects of the hybrid system. Technical decisions expected to be finalised over the next year to 18 months. On my Twitter, by the way, we are at EV News Daily. I shared an article yesterday about the original battery for Formula E. And of course, next season, which starts later this year, brand new battery in Formula E, no drive driver swaps twice the power twice the energy storage however that original battery which so many people said mm, it's not going to last is still going strong and the races have been getting longer and longer and adding laps because that originally original battery well it just keeps going and going thank you so much for all of your comments over the last day by the way we'll get to those tomorrow to kick off a brand new week of ev news daily but i will just say to the gang at river simple do follow them on twitter and a um, also one of our followers on twitter uh, put me onto this article so river river simple all about uh, hydrogen evs by the way fuel cell electric vehicles and if you want to follow them uh, you can follow them at River Simple, and they are part of the Gumball 3000 rally, and that used to start, by the way, or the cars used to be stored overnight outside where I work, a place called Golden Square in London. This year, though, they're in Covent Garden in London, and River Simple were there with their hydrogen car, the Rasa, celebrating the start of the Gumball 3000 uh, as they rev up for 3,000 miles heading to 
Tokyo. You can follow them online, by the way, and follow their adventures. Good luck with the infrastructure. Okay, announcement coming tomorrow, by the way.、Uh, nothing to look at for the moment, but a few, well, more and more people actually,、uh, as time went on, said, you, know, you should do a Patreon because you put a lot of work into this. And a lot of people like to put $5 here, $5 there,、uh, which is a few pounds, and support their favorite creators. So, yes, I've gone and done it. I've put the page live. It's not finished. Please don't have a look at it yet, but it is a Patreon page for EV News. Daily, and that will be ready to rock and roll in the next day. Gone and done it. Thank you for your advice and all the tips that people have been giving me. And I must admit, I've been holding off for a really long time.、Uh, I always want to be giving you more than you give in return. I like that. I like the idea of just making these great shows. I'm going to do more, more video, more shows, more stuff on Saturdays as well, as well as the interviews.、I'm、going to do some extra, extra new shows. You can still get them all for free. Please don't feel that's something that you have to look at the Patreon page anytime today.、Uh, and for the people that do, I always want them to be thinking, you know what? I only chip in a fiver or a, a ten dollars, but I'm getting a lot in return, like a, a show every single day, like five hours a month or something. So, like I said, I'll be ready to go from、uh, from tomorrow, even though I've put the page live now. In the meantime, all previous 201 episodes of the podcast are on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, TuneIn, Stitcher, and the blog at evnewsdaily.com. If you subscribe, you get them first and free and automatically. They'll always be free. Don't worry about that. And if you want to leave a little review, that would mean that would mean more. Actually, a review and a star rating. Would be amazing, please, on any of those platforms. Say hi on the socials at EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you tomorrow.